Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about Link and what some of our models are making of its current price action. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter, where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So speaking of risk indicators, I want to start with our upside downside potential indicator for Link. So if you're not familiar, this is our risk model. It basically assesses when risk is high. So essentially when the upside potential is low, downside potential is quite high. That's these high values, and then also those low risk points when the downside potential has likely been tapped out and upside potential is more plausible going out from there. So I'm showing you the long term UDPI. This is reactive to moves that play out over months. So a longer term time preference here. And I'm just showing you the price history of link color coded to the UDPI output. And you can see in these green zones, these low risk zones, that's generally been an advantageous time to be buying link. And these red zones have been times where it's been advantageous to distribute link tend to proceed these moves back down to the downside. And what you can see now is we're re-entering the green zone right here, suggesting that this is now looking like one of these low risk points that we've seen in the past. And something I think is kind of remarkable about link when you just look at its price history is that the current downtrend that we're in is really the longest downtrend we've seen for Link ever since really going all the way back to um, 2018. And then really for the rest of it, with a bunch of volatility, Link has really just been kind of have been going up. And then hitting his all-time high in the spring, I guess you could technically call this part of this downtrend, but for sure this being kind of a more downtrend we're in right now. And, you know, maybe one of the reasons why Link has been able to do so well, it's something that, you know, a number of people have um, talked about is how Link is really kind of very much a fundamentally strong asset for people who believe in Web3 in particular, particularly believe in DeFi and its continuation. You know, uh, Chainlink is the data oracle that underlies a ton of DeFi projects. It's really far and away the leading oracle um, provider, there's really nothing that can hold a candle to, to Chainlink's market reach. And so maybe that's partly why it's been able to do so well. And it also, a notable thing about Link is it also has had these times where it's really outperformed the rest of the market, like back in August of 2020. You know, some other coins have been moving up there, but Link really went nuts here. And you can actually see it printed a pretty high UDPI level, then it came crashing back down it had gotten a bit overextended. But just an interesting thing, Link is kind of an interesting asset in that sense. It doesn't always perform exactly like the other assets in the crypto space. Obviously, it's going to be correlated to Bitcoin. So that's obviously, you know, probably partly what's going on with this downtrend here. The broader market's been bearish. Link has been caught up in that as well. But there are these kind of interesting times where it can kind of go a little bit nuts relative to the rest of the market. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But just to talk a little, a little bit more about the UDPI levels, so I'm showing you the raw output of the UDPI here across time. And one of the things I think is really remarkable about Link is just look at how volatile the UDPI kind of uh, levels are, how much it traverses its entire UDPI kind of um, uh, possibility spectrum here. I think Link is probably the most volatile in this sense, I think, of all the assets that we're tracking, at least so far in its history. It's, you know, going up, realizing most of its upside potential, then cooling off, and then kind of going around, realizing it again, again, etc. And I think that's something that's kind of notable. And you'll notice there are kind of these three points in Link's history when it's gotten down into these really deep negatives, negative four to negative five levels. And that's this point here, the absolute bottom um, for Link right here in 2018. Here, late 2018, here in the summer of 21 before this move here and then again not so long ago and then had been realizing some upside potential since then now obviously as i was saying i think link is not is unlikely to be able to totally decouple itself from the market so really probably going to be necessary for the broader market to get more bullish for link to really go on a run but if that were to happen you know who knows maybe we're seeing a setup for some nice move to the upside like we've seen in the past you know, obviously, macro conditions are a lot more bearish now than they've been in prior times with inflation being so high and all the other um, things going on, the war in Ukraine, all those kind of issues. So obviously, the kind of the backdrop is very different than these other points in time when we hit these levels. But should bearishness not, not win out and should bullishness be able to return, maybe 
this is really that value zone like what we've seen in the past. Time will tell, of course, but I think it's interesting to note the consistency at which it's hit these levels and what that lines up to in its past. So right now at the long-term UDPI, we're sitting just above negative two, so still quite a bit of realistic upside potential in the coming months. But again, I'd expect the market to have to get a little bit more bullish for that to happen. But one thing I think is interesting about Link that I kind of mentioned before, what I'm showing you here is just overlaying the ETH UDPI, long-term UDPI over the um, the Link long-term UDPI. So the Link long-term UDPI is this, um, the white line here or whitish gray. And then the green line is the link um, UDPI across time. And what I was, one of the things I was noting or I was mentioning is that link will do these things where relative to something like Ethereum being kind of the prominent non-Bitcoin, you know, uh, uh, point out there, you know, people oftentimes will pit altcoins against ETH because with the idea being that, you know, if it can't hold its own against ETH, what's the point of having it? Just own ETH. But I think the interesting thing here is that Link has shown in the past multiple times its ability to kind of run away from ETH in terms of realizing its realistic upside potential to a greater degree than ETH has, right? You can see that in this run up here, for example, uh, Link realized quite a bit more of its realistic upside potential than ETH did in that move up. And then especially the case here in the summer of 2020, you know, Link went crazy, realized a ton of, of its, uh, basically exhausted its upside potential here. Whereas, you know, ETH put in a move at that time was nothing to the same degree, at least in terms of its own upside potential. So something that's kind of interesting. And so who knows, you know, maybe if we are going to get another move up, maybe sort of like in the summer of 2020, which is kind of that first move out of that really bearish point with the March 2020 crash, who knows, maybe Link could do something like that again. That's, of course, wild speculation. But it is just interesting to note that Link has done this in the past a couple of times, whereas a lot of the other assets you'll look at they don't do this when you put them against ETH's UDPI. They kind of just are more or less in lockstep or actually underperform from this perspective. Just something that I, I think is interesting. So to wrap up the discussion on the UDPI, I want to show the different time frames. So I was just showing you there the long term, which is just uh, above negative two. But then we also have the medium term, which is reactive to moves that play out over weeks to months. And then also the short term UDPI, which is reactive to moves that play out over days to weeks. What you can see is in the medium term, it's a little bit more undecided. It's kind of flatlined here, suggesting that kind of in the, the more medium term, it thinks that upside and downside potential are kind of equally plausible. But in the coming days, so kind of in a shorter time perspective, it thinks that we might be able to see some upside, that it is factoring in more realistic upside than downside. Not that this is impossible, but that's what it's seeing. So kind of my overall evaluation of this, is that I think in the long term, should the market get bullish, there's quite a bit of longer term upside potential to realize. In the medium term, we might be a little bit um, heated up to go too crazy in the medium term, but there is some room and, and maybe in the shorter term, it's a little bit more bullish. But again, negative 1.19 is not too extreme on that level. So I would say, I would say that these you know, could go either way, but I do think the long term, there's some upside potential to be realized there. Now, the final asset that I wanted to talk a little bit about was the trend confidence indicator or TCI for Link. Now this is a completely different model from the UDPI. This is not a risk model. This basically tries to look at kind of essentially how confident can we be in a given trend or another way of thinking about it is how healthy is a trend that we're in. And so essentially what the TCI does is it evaluates the current trend we're in and then basically is able to tell you, um, you know, should we believe this trend or should we be doubting this trend? So the kind of simple dividing line here is um, zero. So zero is kind of that uh, point between bullishness and bearishness. So being above zero is good, being below zero is bad. And the idea is that if you're in an uptrend, so you know if you're moving up and the TCI is green, that's good. That means that we can have some confidence in that trend continuing. But then if you're in that uptrend and then the TCI goes down and flips red, like what happened here, then you can be relatively, um, the, the idea is that that is likely that the trend is then over. So like, for example, we saw here, you know, going up, staying green this whole time, then immediately coming down and hitting red down here, showing that this uptrend was coming to an end, most likely. And the nice thing about the TCI is that oftentimes it can act as a leading indicator, so or at least an early indicator of a trend reversal. So you'll note that red tends to happen in these kind of down moves and then flips to green for the up move. 
And then there are times like kind of coming in um, in here where it'll start flipping, you know, green early, suggesting that there's some upside to come. And then also flipping down red early to kind of give you early warning that the current uptrend might be slowing down a little bit. Now, it's useful to note then that where we stand right now is we flip back into the green with this most recent move up. And we've actually remained green, which is interesting because with the TCIs for some other assets like Bitcoin, for example, Bitcoin recently flipped red for the first time in several months. So obviously you could look at that and say, well, then that means that if Bitcoin is looking bearish, then that Link will look bearish as well. It's totally possible. But it is notable that Link has stayed green even when some of the other um, assets in the market have been flipping more bearish. So I'm going to be watching this carefully. You know, if this would flip red, that would obviously not be such a good sign. You'd expect some downside from here. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. But, but just to flip over to trading view and talk about this a bit more, the one thing about this kind of range that might set it up as being pretty strong support is that we do know, if we just look at the amount of volume that's transpired in this range, it's a lot. If we just look at the this kind of visible range here, you know, the most tra the most volume that's been transacted has happened in this kind of general range, right? You know, we're talking about the range from around $16 down to around $12. That's where the majority within this range, well, not the majority, but the highest amount, you know, in, in the distribution, the highest amount of volume is, is transacted here. So it's possible that there's some support that's sitting here back from here in the summer. Maybe even some people would gotten in back here. And maybe this could then offer a support level for us to be able to move back up. Now, again, I think this is all going to be dependent on what Bitcoin does in the broader markets. I think that Bitcoin, the broader markets uh, are able to get a more bullish uh, footing or kind of if Bitcoin is able to kind of go back into an uptrend, then I think Link, this very well could be the bottom and Link could start moving back up. And then you start looking at some of these higher levels to start slicing through really with a lot of resistance being here in the kind of the mid to upper 20s, potentially being a big test that would have to get past going back up there. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. So really kind of my outlook with Link is I do think it's a very strong fundamental project in terms of, you know, generally, if you're a believer in Web3, given how integral Link is right now with a lot of Web3 projects, it kind of is a no brainer in some ways that kind of the health of the Web3 movement seems like Link should be keeping step with that, at least to some degree. But who knows? You know, certainly in the shorter term, I think there could be a lot of downside volatility. So obviously, none of this is financial advice should form your own opinions. But that's what our models are looking at right now. All right. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. And we put out a lot of updates about our risk indicators and more over